Before I go into today's review, I want to start with a piece of trivia. I want you to guess what game, from any system, from any era, in fact any game ever made, has received the lowest score by IGN. Stay tuned for the answer a little later on. Now despite being a huge N64 fan, there are still a few games which I've never got around to playing for one reason or another. Granted they are mostly titles which haven't piqued my interest for varying reasons, but by the time I finish this channel I want to have covered them all. And so that leads me to today's game, Olympic Hockey Nagano 98. Coming from Midway in 1998, it was a game which I overlooked for quite an obvious reason. I already had and loved Wayne Gretzky hockey titles for their arcade action, and I also loved the Breakaway series for a more simulation approach, so there really was no need for me to look into this game any further. Konami had the rights to the official Nagano Winter Olympics game, but for a reason I've never been able to figure out, Midway held the rights to make a hockey game from this particular event. If you were wondering why hockey wasn't included in Konami's Nagano Winter Olympics game, then this is perhaps why. It may also surprise you to know that Konami were also listed as being co-publishers, and so it would appear that a deal was made to get this game onto store shelves. When I first turned the game on I was instantly disappointed by the pretty basic looking menus and lack of much depth. The fact that most of the graphics looked like they had been taken from Microsoft Office's clip art library didn't get things off to a good start. And then when I actually started a match, things took an unexpected turn. Just seconds into the game I realised it's nothing more than a reskinned version of Wayne Gretzky. Gone are the NHL teams and players, instead replaced with international teams, and that's pretty much it. Of course the game was published by Midway, but I wondered what studio had been tasked with putting this together. With the game being exactly the same as Wayne Gretzky, it was of course the same engine that Atari had made, but who else could have been involved in this total sham? Well it turns out the developer of this title is none other than Treyarch. Yes, the same studio who is now known for pushing out Call of Duty every few years. This was their first console piece of work, and if you wondered why they churn out pretty much the same game in the Call of Duty series, then this is perhaps your answer. Even the cheat codes from Wayne Gretzky work here, the exact same ones. As I've already reviewed that title, I'm going to end this review right here. Simply put, this is nothing more than the exact same game with a new lick of paint. Buy and play the real version, not this fake excuse for a new title. So going back to my piece of trivia, this is the game which has the all-time lowest score from IGN. They gave this title a score of zero, they actually refused to even review the game and stated that they will only review a new game when Midway makes one. Ouch. So for today's topic of conversation, I want to know how you think they thought that they could get away with this. It's a very dark and low point in the N64 library, and even though Superman 64 often gets the title as the worst game on the system, at least it was a new and unique title. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and until next time.